T-minus one minute and counting. The Soyuz is now on internal power. The automatic launch sequencer has been activated in the first umbilical tower. We'll be backed away from the booster itself. There on the ground in Baikonur, a crowd of uh, family and friends and NASA officials, as well as Roscosmos officials, are watching tonight's launch. Less than a mile away from the uh, Soyuz itself. T-minus 30 seconds and counting. Dimitri, we have 24 seconds. Yes, Anthony College, we're ready for the launch. Okay, I will stay um, with you, and I will continue communicating with you. Okay, that's nice. 10 seconds. Preliminary. Five seconds. Engines at maximum thrust and liftoff of the Soyuz TMA-20 as Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, and Dmitry Kondratiev head toward the International Space Station. All the parameters of the control systems are within the norm. Okay, we copy. The Soyuz lighting up the night sky there at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. It's a good pitch program according to flight controllers. The Soyuz is delivering 102 tons of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. The first stage of the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It is burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of the flight. Pressure is normal. 60 seconds. Your pitch and roll are within the norm. One minute and 10 seconds into the flight, the velocity is at 1,100 miles per hour. 70 seconds, nominal flight. Dmitry, how's the G-load? Increasing? Slowly increasing, yes. You can hear the crew talking with the Russian uh, ground controllers. They're reporting that the uh, G-force is building up on them as the Soyuz continues to speed up. We're now at one minute and 37 seconds into the flight. Seconds, um, Katie Coleman, Paolo Nespoli, and Dmitry Kondratiev now officially on their way toward the International Space Station. Once again, docking will take place on Friday, and of course, we'll have live coverage here on NASA television. And 10 seconds. So does it, what does One minute, 58 seconds into the flight, jettison of the four strap-on boosters will take place. These have completed their job and have dropped away. At an altitude of 28 statute miles, the Soyuz now traveling at about 3,350 miles an hour. There are live view inside the Soyuz, Paolo Nespoli there on the right-hand side. Dmitry Kondratiev there in the middle seat. He is the commander of the spacecraft. And on the left-hand side, just out of view, is Katie Coleman. Parameters of the launch vehicle are normal. Okay, copy. Everything is nominal on board. 150 seconds. All stages are functioning nominally. Have you noticed when you switched over to the second stage? Yes, a little bit bump and the change in the load. That's what we felt. Now, almost three minutes into the flight, the visiting vehicle officer here inside Mission Control has confirmed that the launch shroud has been jettisoned. There is Katie Coleman on the left-hand side. She and her colleagues about to begin a five or six month uh, trip to the International Space Station to join the in progress Expedition 26. 180 seconds. The Soyuz now traveling 4,700 miles an hour. Jet, fight, fighter jet. No. The Soyuz's core stage is performing as expected. The core stage is about 56 feet in length, 13 and a half feet in diameter with a single engine that has four fuel chambers providing 96 tons of thrust for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. On the, on the shuttle, when you flew, um, was the load higher or lower? Well, I have experienced the loads inside the centrifuge many times. 
Okay, the stabilization is uh, stable. Okay, copy. We see you. We see you. Katie Coleman there waving to the camera and everybody that's uh, watching her and the rest of the crew head towards space. The yeah, ground team there talking with Katie about her uh, experiences on board the space shuttle as she flew aboard Space Shuttle Columbia and uh, comparing it to the Soyuz flight that she is now uh, undertaking.